Hi and welcome back. In this video we'll continue working on the Tetris game that we started a couple videos ago. Currently our program can drop a Tetris block at a certain time interval, and when the block touches the bottom edge of the play area, it stops. In this video we'll make our program spawn a new block when the current one stops. So let's get started, shall we? We already have spawn block method in the game area class. We currently call it inside the game area constructor, which means that the method gets called only once at the start of the game, which isn't what we need. So the question is, where should we call the spawn block method instead? Since we need to call the spawn block method multiple times during the game, the game thread class seems to be a good choice. So let's remove the spawn block method call from the game area constructor. Switch over to the game thread class and think about where in code we should call it. If you think we should add a spawn block method call inside the run method, you're absolutely right. Where exactly inside the run method though? Inside or outside the while loop? I didn't really mention this explicitly, but this while loop is our main game loop. It runs as long as we keep playing the game. And yes, you got it. We should call the spawn block method inside the while loop. But we only want to spawn a new block when the current block stops moving down. How do we check whether the current block can or cannot continue moving down? Any ideas? Well, I know that you know that I will answer this question in a few seconds. But instead of waiting for me to answer, why don't you pause this video and try to find the answer on your own? Come on, don't be lazy. So what we can do is we can modify the move block down method so that it returns true if the current block was successfully moved down and false if that did not happen. Before we actually modify the move block down method, let's pretend that we have already done that and the method returns a boolean value. So what we can do is we can take this move block down method call out of the try block. Add another while loop, which will run until the current block can move down. And while that is happening, we will have the game thread object wait. Let's now switch over to the game area class and make the necessary changes to the move block down method. So if the current block cannot be moved down, let's have the move block down method return false. And otherwise, let's have it return true. If we now switch back to the game thread class, we will see that NetBeans is no longer yelling at us. We can also shorten the while loop condition like this. All right, let's run our game to see if it works. Well, now when our blue block hits the bottom edge of the game area, the game doesn't stop as it did before. But the problem is that the block doesn't stay at the bottom of the game area and sort of teleports back to the spawn position. To be more precise, the blue block that hits the bottom edge of the game area and the blue block that appears at the top right after are not the same Tetris block objects. How do we know that? Well, if we look at the spawn block method, we will see that every time the method is called, it creates a new Tetris block instance and assigns it to the variable block. In other words, when the current block hits the bottom edge of the game area, the game thread creates and spawns a new Tetris block. And the reference to the new Tetris block object is stored in the variable block, while the reference to the previous Tetris block object is lost, and it never gets drawn again. Because the draw block method is responsible for drawing the Tetris block object pointed to by the variable block, it always draws the most recent Tetris block object, ignoring the previous ones. So what we need to do is we need to have our program draw not only the currently fallen block, but all the blocks. The thing is, when a block stops falling, it effectively stops being a block. I mean, if a block stops falling, we can no longer move it, and it can be partially removed from the game area when they make up a complete line. In other words, we do not need to treat the blocks that have stopped falling as Tetris block objects, which makes the task of drawing them somewhat easier. Let me show you what I mean. We can imagine that the game area consists of background and foreground parts. In the foreground, we can have a falling block, while in the background, we can have the blocks that have stopped falling. And we can treat all the blocks that have stopped falling as a single object, just a pile of colored squares. 
Now the question is, how do we represent that background? What data type do we use? Actually, we can use a similar data type that we use to represent blocks, an array of arrays, but not int arrays. Because we'll have Tetris blocks of various colors, we can't really use ones and zeros to represent the presence or absence of the color. What we will use is an array of arrays of the type color. In the game area class, let's declare a member variable for the array. And instantiate the array to default values inside the constructor. Now, what would be the length of the array? The background array must have the same dimensions as the game area grid, so the background array should be instantiated with the following length. If you're not sure what just happened on the screen, I recommend that you pause the video and try to make sense of the background array. Now in the game area class, we have the draw block method that is effectively responsible for drawing the foreground, which means that we also need a method responsible for drawing the background. Let's add a new private void method and name it draw background. Just like the draw block method, the draw background method needs a graphics object to be able to draw. And before we forget, let's call the draw background method inside the paint component method, like this. So the draw background method will be responsible for drawing the contents of the background array in the game area. And the code for that is very similar to the code of the draw block method. Now, color is a reference data type, which means the default value for color is null. We can interpret null as no color. So we only need to draw if the color is not null. These four lines of code responsible for drawing a single square of the grid is largely copy-pasted. And what do we do with the code that gets copy-pasted? Right, we make it more annoying by moving that code into a separate method. Let's add a new private void method named drawGridSquare and leave the parameters list blank for now. Let's now move these four lines of code to the drawGridSquare method. to see that it needs a G, a color, and non-green X and Y. So these are what the method should get passed as parameters. Let's now call the method inside the draw background method. And inside the draw block method. To see if this works, let's scroll up to the constructor and set the 0, 0 element of the background array to, say, green. Now if we run our game, the grid square in the top left corner will be green. And it is green. Before we move on, let's delete this line of code. We don't need it anymore. What we need to do now is we need to have the block that can no longer fall down become a part of the background to make sure it won't disappear from the screen. For this, let's add a new method to the game area class. The method should be private and void. Let's name it move block to background. Long but more or less self-explanatory. What this method will do is it will check every element of the current block's shape array And if the element is equal to 1, which means that it's a colored cell, the method will set the corresponding element of the background array to the color of the block. 
Before we move on, please look at the code we just added and make sure you understand how it works. You might need to refer to the previous videos if it's hard for you to follow. Please do so if you need. Now, where do we call this method? At what point during the game do we move the block to the background? Right, when we can no longer move it downwards. So we can call move block to background method inside the move block down method right before we return false. And if we run our game now, we will see that the block doesn't disappear after it stops falling, and our program gets more and more Tetris-like. So step three, complete. All right, let's summarize what we did in this video. Because the draw block method only draws the currently falling block, all previous blocks do not get drawn in the game area. To fix this, we added an array of color arrays to the game area class, and the job of the array is to represent the background of the game area. The background array is then drawn in the game area by the draw background method. Just like all dogs go to heaven, all blocks eventually go to the background array. All right, so this was a relatively short video, but before you move on to the next one, please make sure you understand how the code that we added this time works. And this is it for this video. In the next one, we'll make our game respond to keyboard key press. For example, we will have it move the falling block left and right when we press the left or right arrow key on the keyboard. See you then. Bye.